the sweet rays of the sunland in the heartland of eastern Nigeria, Imo State. Imo State is bordered by Abia State to the east, Delta State to the west, Anambra State to the north, and River State to the south. The city of Oweri is Imo State's capital as well as its largest city. Oweri is also regarded as the city of statues. I stand here not as a sign of disrespect, but in honor of the statues of heroes mounted here at the Iwo Square in Oweri, the Imo state capital, where the achievements of the 35 meter tall statues are in the books for all to see. But all eyes are waiting, we all are waiting for the next individual that will be mounted at this spot. Imo State is one of the oil producing states that make up Nigeria's Niger Delta region. Nine coastal states make up Nigeria's oil-rich Niger Delta region, which rests on the Gulf of Guinea and on the Atlantic Ocean. Imo State is one of these states, hosting more than 163 oil wells and counting. But how are the communities in this area faring? It is a 30-minute drive from Oweri to Uguta, one of the oil-producing local governments in the state. Sitting majestically on the east bank of the Uguta Lake are 27 autonomous communities that make up Uguta local government. They are separated by this lake into two townships. Uh, hey, keep saying it. Say that one. Located within the equatorial rainforest region of the Niger Delta, but now surrounded by oil palm plantations. The 8.05 km long and 2.41 km wide Oguta Lake receives an average rainfall of 3,100 mm every year. It is a source of water, fishing, tourism revenue and much more to the locals. It is the largest natural lake in Imo State. It is also a waiting and departure point. Since there is no link bridge, ferries and canoes take passengers, goods and vehicles across the lake 
to link other parts of the local government. The procedure for bringing down cars is one that the indigents are used to. Planks are arranged so that vehicles can have a smooth landing. For some, it is business on water. For others, it is a place to relax and enjoy the gentle, peaceful breeze nature has bestowed upon them. Years ago, Oguta was one of the first territories used by the British to advance into the Igbo hinterland. The lake was a port for the evacuation of farm products in the colonial era, as well as a marine base for the Biafran Navy during the Civil War. Oguta was one of the oldest trade and administrative centers in Nigeria, hosting a number of companies like the Niger Company and the United African Company. A very rich and interesting story, filled with rich history, you would say. But what has become of Oguta years and years after? That constituency is the hen that lays the golden egg. Agricultural product is from there. The oil mineral resources is from there. In fact, that's actually what gave rise to Imo states being included into NDCC states. That is Uguta and the neighboring local government, Ohaji Ebema. They were endowed with mineral resources but these mineral resources, instead of being a blessing, it has become a nightmare. The oil companies in that locality don't even know that they exist. The oil companies there, I have said it times without number, that they neglect that people with ease, with impunity. They don't care. The, the notorious fact that from Osobodo to Izum, you get to Izum, they, they have four autonomous communities in that community. Three of the Aziz are blind. This is as a result of the hazardous environmental attack of that um, community. So, uh, my people are really in agony, and uh, it, I'm not happy. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not a happy man. I continue to shout, I continue to cry, I continue to lament until our cries are at least attended to. The area is replete with buildings of the British era. They have become relics, a reminder of the past. Now old, abandoned and in the weeds. Right, let's get up. Holding a potential for a great tourist experience, many of Oguta's young and old worry, wondering when the sleeping giant will rise and add to the fortunes of the state. Everything is still and quiet except for birds chirping and the sounds of vehicles from a distance. This is the moribund Three Star Oguta Lake Motel and Resort with an 18 holes cottage designed golf course. It used to be busy with a cruise service providing tourists a place to stay when they visit the lake, 
but it has now waited for revival. Weeds, rodents and other creeping animals are having a field day as it remains deserted. This square hall here, surrounded by weeds, holds a rich history. It is a relic of war constructed by the Biafran Davy. Referred to as Ojuku Bunker, it is a hideout that was built during the Nigerian Civil War with an underground tunnel that runs under the lake. But this is where he used to uh, go down the Nigerian army boats when they came to invade uh, Oguta. But right now, kidnappers are taking over the bunker. They are using it as a hideout. But the Nigerian army have sealed the, the apartment under the underground. So right now, nobody can make use of it. It's no longer a tourist attraction. We used to use this uh, place to make money before. The then uh, state government. But right now, it's just... You look at the buildings here, vandalized. This place was thoroughly furnished by the rescue mission as a hall for uh, uh, the motels. But right now, they stole all the glasses, vandalized the glasses, the roof, and even the, the golf course where you used to have a reception. Everywhere has been vandalized by good luck. This is the golf course, the only golf course in the whole southeast, mm -hmm. the standard golf course. But now it has been abandoned. The road you applied was built in 1977. And you, you did you find any pothole there? 1977, the first tax 77 when Uguta Lake Motels was built. As a growing child, I saw, I visit there, not one, I visit from my house and we trek to this place and we see the white men swimming on that lake. I was seeing men, women coming to play golf at that golf course taking a flying boat to for sightseeing. One of the many reasons tourists visit Oguta is because of the features of the lake, which to many is a natural wonder. Far from the shore is a part of the lake that is a beautiful work of nature and a pleasant sight to the eyes. The natural confluence of two rivers, two different colors, one half is brownish and the other half appears greenish. The angry rivers flow side by side and never mix. Nature's wonder. The water. This one is whitish and this one is a kind of brownish and you will marvel and honestly appreciate God for the work of nature and you begin to imagine so you have this kind of a place and is allowed to follow and dilapidate we moved swiftly to a neighborhood community also in Oguta local government. In Ebuku lies strategically in proximity to the Oguta Lake. And as the people go about their daily activities, there is a pain in their hearts. This rusty signpost now filled with posters, was erected by the Niger Delta Development Commission. It signals a project, a beacon of hope for the community and the entire local government. Years after, community members still wonder why a bridge to connect Neboku to other areas of the local government, as well as to other states, remains in this state, abandoned. This steep, uneven road leads to the site of the bridge project, abandoned due to some engineering design and valuation deficiency.
workstations have been abandoned, there is no contractor on site, equipment all over and the weeds wasting away. Will their engines ever come alive? Will they work again? The iron rods meant for piling are getting weak daily. Pipes are now rusty, lying in corners. Erosion is now eroding what is left of the landscape, sending people out of their homes and washing away the roads. Flooding is now a major issue. This project was awarded in 2011 and they started, they came on site and started a uh, job. The NDDC uh, engineers and the contractor, Jinaku Nigerian Limited, started job and they've started piling as you can see. They've done 80% of the piling before the 2012 flood came and they said the first abutment was uh, over flooded. So they had to increase it with about two meters. And the design of the bridge, they said they have to redesign it and that's more money. And this bridge, the abandon is very, very, very important to Ninja Delta as a whole. It has caused a lot of uh, economic setback for us. Look at this. This bridge was some field. They did piling. This is a river that is flowing, but now it's not flowing. Look at it now. You see that our people cannot uh, drink water from here anymore. This thing continues for the next three years. Nobody will be living around here. These are the economic... Uh, 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 Sabotage, the, the abandoned bridge has cost us. We are producing oil. We are one of the oil producers. This is the Niger Delta State. Our 13%, we don't even know where it's going. These are most important projects, capital projects that affects the whole Niger Delta. And you abandon it. So they should, they should come back to site and then set our people. They are, they are homeless. There are people that are homeless because of this project that have been abandoned. The Russian has destroyed their homes. Because of the project they abandoned. The land is devastated, crying for help. This river used to flow before, but it is now stagnant. Water hyacinth ravaged the water body and the water is becoming polluted daily. Took a canoe to see parts of the lake and we could see water hyacinth on the surface of the lake. This Rasta signpost welcomes you to the maternal and child health facility in Orsu Obodo, a neighboring community to Nebuku. The entrance is in a bad state not befitting for a place where people are supposed to get health care. Gates are rusty and at best lying on the ground. A building meant to cater for the needs of mothers and children hasn't functioned for once. In its front is a signpost erected by the NDDC for a health care centre. Since it hasn't been opened, the entrance is now used for cultivating cassava. Other buildings in the compound are getting weak under the weight of weeds and trees that have found a home inside the structures. We are talking about uh, NDDC. We don't have any presence of NDDC in Osobono. You can look at here and here is the center of the community. Here is not functioning. You can look at this building. It's over, two thousand, over 16 years that this structure has been abandoned. You can look at the other one that is not yet completed. This one is over 18 years they have been abandoned. If you go to our schools, there's nothing happening, they're going on in Osobodo. Look at this sofa, overhead tank. This tank has been here for over 20 years. And then nobody can, can, nobody have taken water from this tank for the first time. But if you go back to NDC, they will say they have completed it. We produce oil here, we have over 16 oil wellheads. This community had oil as far back, back as 1974, 75. 
But since then till now, there's nothing to show about our oil. Our schools are bad, the roads are bad, we don't even have light. So the community is really crying, begging government that they should come to our aid and they should come and show that we are part of the oil producing community. We have gone to Government House, we have gone to NDDC, we have gone to East Sopadek, we have gone to a lot of places to complain by, by writing and also by physical protest. We have done that. Everything we can tell us that, they will, that they, will do, they, will, they, will, they will do something about it. Nothing is being done up till now. For once, for even a second, nothing, this water has not flowed in this community. This has, you can see, now they have not even opened it, talk of using it. It has not. But if you go down to their documents, that they, would, they have signed all this is off, taking the money. Meters away, we see a building put up by the community to cater for the health needs of its indigents, but challenges abound. This one, this particular structure here, is community effort. The community contributed money, thus each and every one of us in the community, and they put this one workable. Here we have only about three people working here as a staff. We don't have drugs, we don't have don't no doctor, and this is the only health center that covers all this area. Both K Beach, Nebuku, down to Mpwesin, Mbele. We don't have any other health center, any facility our people can go for to save their lives. So we need drugs, more especially, because at times they will bring, if they, if they, some cases will come here, they will ask them to go out because there's no drug to take care of them. And they don't have any place the staffs will live. Because in a place like this, the staff is supposed to be close, so that when you have emergency, they, that, that we can have anybody around to come and save the, that person's life. We don't have any any accommodation for the staffs. We don't have any drugs. We, of course, they don't work in four sevens. The few of them that is working here before before six, they will all find their way to go. Was there's no security here? There's no accommodation, and uh, above all, we don't have drugs. So please, we are begging the government to come to our rescue. In another part of the community is the bridge project abandoned for years now. It is also an NDDC project. Contractors have changed, but the project has recorded little progress. If you look at the, the other bridge, it was awarded to Mife Company by Shell. But they in 1990, over 20 years ago, and it was abandoned by Mife since then. But then this is just come up to assist the people of this area because during the rainy season, we can't pass here, no motor can pass here. You can only use serious flood, you can only use canoe to pass this place. So then this I came to intervene and gave this job, this one now to Timic Construction Company. And uh, I will not say, unfortunately I'm the CLO of this job. I'm the CLO here, I'm working with them. But the, the company, the director complained that NDC have never mobilized him. They now gave him a challenge. He should go, to, he should go and walk to a certain point before he can now be mobilized. They are not giving him money. They are not giving any part payment. That's what I mean by mobilizing him. So now, even I was the one that went and shot it, 300 bucks of cement, that I used in putting up this structure. So there's no money to continue with the work. That is why the work is being abandoned now. As we made our way out of Oguta, we had a brief stop at Izombe, an oil producing community. It is the host community of one of Imo State's oil wells. But indigents say they need the government and the oil companies to do more to fight environmental pollution, as well as the provision of community focused corporate social responsibility programs. Some locals are registering their displeasure by placing these leaves in protest at the gate of the oil well. Bliss, aquatic splendor, nature at its best. While the Uguta Lake remains the pride of its indigents, flowing with the tide, they hope that the tide will indeed flow in their direction, bringing with it all-round development and a wind of change.